reacting to woke TikToks. And I personally love this segment because it's fun, it's easy, and it's real. So <laughs> Lizzo TikTok tweeted this out and said, we have a serious mental health crisis in this country. So let's see what uh, she's talking about. I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about it. So try gender and the way you identify in it can be very heavily based on your culture and your cultural background. For example, I know in Hawaiian culture, um, there are three genders. There's a third gender. Uh, I forget what it's called. I'm sorry. But if you happen to be native Hawaiian, you could identify as that. You think you would like Google that before you get on camera running your mouth? You got on camera to run your mouth about how there's three genders in a certain culture and you couldn't even be bothered to research what it's called to prove it. Girl. And I can't with the... This, I mean, this woman is clearly damaged. Like, the makeup, the, the flag behind her. Like, if you're an audio listener, she has made trans her entire identity eyeshadow or lipstick or earrings or room I mean that is just sad that is just sad I remember a time first of all this isn't trans that's the first thing but if we're going to talk about trans it's like I remember a time when like transition was the gateway to living your life and then being normal like that was the entire way not to get off on a tangent here that was the entire way I even perceived transition when I began which was like okay I have this effed up thing happening in my brain called gender dysphoria I can't leave the house. I can't participate in society. I can't get a job. I can't do anything because it's just that crippling. So I'll transition. And then after that, I actually became a productive member of society. And that was the key to, to, to letting me know it was the right decision for me. It's like, you don't make it your identity. It's you get, you do it and then you move on. But of course, like I said, that's a whole other tangent because that's me. That's an actual trans person. This is not trans. This is trigender. You are crazy, ho. You're crazy. I saw a funny meme and it was like, white people be seeing that they're ugly and suddenly they're non-binary. <laughs> and can we talk about how that's real? Because I've never seen a hot non-binary. Have you? I just, I just feel like more times than not, it is someone who, I don't care, people can get mad, is very like aesthetically not pleasing and, you know, it's kind of easier to just be like, well, everything's effed up anyways, let me just eff it up more and dilute my gender identity more. Like, it's just like a whole thing. By as that third gender and then man and woman, or if you happen to be you know, from Native Hawaiian background. And, Are you? And on the other side, you have a different background that also has a third gender. You can identify as those two non-binary genders. And then take your pick if you want man or woman or a, not even another non-binary gender. Oh, another one. You know, it's so funny because it's a wrap for trans stuff. And I say that as a trans person because... There was a time when like people would joke about things like this, like, oh, I'm tri-gender. Oh, well, yeah, you're trans. Well, guess what? I'm tri-gender. Guess what? I'm a helicopter. I'm a uh, attack helicopter. We are now at the point where you actually do have to respect if someone identifies as attack helicopter. It is not. It is not a joke anymore. That's where we're at. Tri-gender. Girl, you're trying me. And you're trying it. But you're failing. But all in all, it comes from your cultural background. So for me, I come from a very heavy Dutch background and American background. So for me, it's more based on if there's man on one side, woman on the other, and non-binary is somewhere in the middle. And then I take up that whole area, the whole bar there. We can see you take up the whole area. That was mean. See, this is, this is, it, it ropes me into just being mean, but it's like, you know, screw me. I'm not mean. I'm defending my life. Like I'm sitting here as like a trans American. I, I really have to put up with Bethany here from <laughs> Wisconsin talking about how she's tri-gender and making actual trans people look like a joke. No, that's way more offensive than me making a fat joke about Bethany. Sorry. 
And I know for a lot of people, non-binary is a completely separate spectrum. And I, that's just not my experience, but I still think that that's a valid experience to have. It all depends on your experiences and your personal history, you know? I hope no. this answers your question. Let me know if you have any more questions and I'd be happy to answer Girl, them. Girl, talk to your dad, please. And I know this is literally just stemming from a lack of a relationship with your dad. That's all it is. Give him a call. I'm sure he'll be forgiving. Just fix your relationship with your dad. And I promise you won't be trigender anymore. Amen. Next. Oh, my God. <laughs> this one is a mess. Male TikToker is practically in tears after getting pushed back from a woman for using the women's restroom. I don't know if I'm ready for this one. Well, this is just lovely. I had a neighbor confront me for using the women's restroom. I lived here for four and a half years. Everyone should know that I'm a trans woman. I've always been known as Kaylee. I've always used she, her pronouns. I've been having some stomach issues because of trulicity and I had to use the bathroom real quick and there's could you be any grosser like everyone should know I'm a trans woman with the beard and all with the hairline all the way in the back like Rosa Parks on the bus really everyone should know you're a trans woman and you can't even be asked to shave a beard women have to give up their spaces to you and you can't even be asked to shave your beard like this is why people <laughs> this is why people don't like trans people like it's just it's one of the lies of trans ideology is that anyone and everyone can be trans in the sense of like somebody lied to her quote to quote the famous Tiffany Pollard, someone lied to her and told her that she could live as a woman. It's a cruel lie. It's not fair to this person, actually. There's this idea that transition is right for anyone who feels that they want to do it. And it's like, no, if you are 6'2 and a linebacker with a beard and a hairline all the way in the back, like Rosa Parks on the bus, girl, transition is not right for you. You're not going to alleviate any gender dysphoria. But then again, I don't think this person has any gender dysphoria because the first thing you do, speaking as someone who had it, is you get rid of the beard. And if you can't be bothered to make that bare minimum effort, why should anyone else put the effort in to convincing themselves that you are not a threat in a bathroom? You look like a threat. I would feel threatened with you in the bathroom and I'm a trans woman. I would not want you to be in a bathroom with you if I saw you walk in with that beard and that hairline all the way in the back like Rosa Parks girl, I would get shook. I'm kind of shook right now. And they're single use bathrooms. And it's the only place that I feel safe using the woman's bathroom. Well, I got done and got out and this neighbor was talking to another neighbor and started pointing out the sign. I knew exactly what she was talking about because there's a big old woman sign. And I'm like, is there a problem? She's like, yeah, you're using the woman's restroom. You're a man. And I said, I'm a trans woman. And she's like, no, you're a man. And she kept saying that over and over. And then I, and she kept saying, you're not a she, you're a he. You shouldn't be using it. You, sh you were born a man. And just over and over. And honestly, I just lost it. It just lost it and just started screaming and swearing. I, I just couldn't handle it. I just, my, this is my home. This is my safe. So you started screaming, like, you are the problem. Kevin, you are the problem. You're screaming. You're verbally assaulting a woman because she felt uncomfortable with you in the bathroom with that beard and that hairline all the way in the back like Rosa Parks on the bus. Before she moved out to the front, though we're also glad that she did. But, but, you know, initially she was in the back and she got sick of it. You should get sick of it. And you should do something with your transition. Like, people really don't realize they're the problem. It's like if, if you're disrupting a woman's bathroom and then you want to be screaming at people about it, you're the problem. A safe place. I should be able to use the restroom. The, the apartment manager knows I'm trans. Everyone knows my name is Kaylee. 
And then my group of friends, I thought my friends were all starting to yell at me saying I escalated and because she had two kids. I, I didn't even see the kids. They were there and I just lost it. Fight, flight, or freeze. And I. So you're also freaking out kids. It's not just women you're disrupting in the bathroom, it's kids. And even your friends are telling you the pro you're the problem. You're the problem. It would be a cold day in hell if any of my friends didn't have my back in a public argument. If I was ever beefing with someone on the street and my friend fixed their mouth to defend that person over me for any reason, my beef was with you now. Because that's just so gross. So if your friends are willing to do that, then you really are the problem. Sorry. And also doing it this to kids. It's like, what a despicable person freeze and I fought you don't know what it's like to be a trans person and then, and then my one friend started yelling at me and neither one of them stood up for them I, they blamed me that I was the one that was at fault you were when when none, none of them stood up to me when 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 this person kept calling me he she he man like triggering and awful like I deal with enough on here like my apartment should so again Going back to what I said earlier in the podcast, as you get older and more mature, you're able to put yourself in other people's shoes. And so I would ask this person, I know they're incapable of it, but you know, maybe your presence is triggering and awful to women in the bathroom. You don't know what the women in there have been through in their lives. Do you think like, I know I'm talking to a wall here, but like, a lot of women go through shit. A lot of women have been through things in their life and in their past and have been harmed by men. And like, it's probably, it can be like a shock to the system to be in a space where you think it's only going to be women and someone with that beard and that hairline all the way in the back, like Rosa Parks walks in and you're going to initially just feel threatened, especially in the closed quarters of a bathroom with one inch, one way in, one way out. Like I would not feel comfortable with you in the bathroom. That should tell you something. All None of your friends defended you. That should tell you something. My God. And it's just so crazy because it actually is in society a bare minimum to have people just be like cool with you, right? Like most people don't go through their lives wanting a problem, wanting to be upset by a stranger, wanting to have beef or have an argument. So like even at the very, very early stages of my transition, when you know no surgeries you know maybe like a week of hormones like whatever it's like there's been no actual feminization that's taken place yet but it's like I clearly even if I was getting clocked on the street I was getting clocked as you know a trans person not as a man in the sense of like oh I can tell that that is a trans person but they're trying and no one was ever cruel to me. And I used the bathroom because it was clear that I was not in there trying to hurt anyone. I was clearly in there like whatever. This person, you look like a convict. You look like a convict. Cue the Akon sound effect. Like that's what you look like. Like my apartment should be a safe place. There's nothing safe. For a trans person, there is nothing safe for a trans person. This is the life. And it fucking sucks. And even when you have your friends don't have your back. And then my one friend, Annette, just starts screaming at me. And I'm like, I start screaming back at her. I'm done. These are fair weather friends. These are not the friends that I need, want, and deserve. And if I can't find it here, I will find it elsewhere. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm so fucking triggered and feeling so. I would say those are real friends <laughs> who are able to see what's up. But I can't. Professors are teaching students that the term American citizen is a radicalized term and associated with whiteness because America was built on white supremacy. Gross. Tell me you are in your second semester of gender studies without telling me you're in your second semester of gender studies. I just got out of a lecture and my professor said something that really struck me that I feel like should have been super obvious that I just had not like connected the dots on before. And that is the fact that the term American citizen is like... A racialized term it's associated with whiteness whether we want it to or not because of the way that white supremacy is so like intricately bound with the foundation of the country that we call america that when you hear the word american citizen the first thing that comes to mind is a white person and what's crazy is i have the super says who because i can genuinely say when i hear the term american citizen i don't actually think of a white person like 
I'm pretty sure this person looks comparably my age, maybe a little younger, but I'm pretty sure we grew up in the same school system that taught us about America being a melting pot. And when I think of the American citizen, I actually think of everyone. I think of like the hardworking, like Mexican Americans. I think of like, you know, black Americans. I think of yes, white Americans, but I think of like the Asian salon owners. Like I think of everyone. So again, whenever these like woke, whiteies come on and they tell on themselves it's like they're she's she's speaking about her own racism it's like these are thoughts that you have baby girl these are not thoughts that everyone has like these people need to learn how to speak for themselves if you're one of these woke whiteies come on camera and say i'm racist like say what you are don't 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 speak for everyone because that's just not this not it's not the tea next oh my god this person looks like humpy dumpty white non-binary people are still privileged because they can call out people who misgender them while black non-binary people can't okay i think that a lot of white non-binary people think that when they start to identify as non-binary that their race just decides to cancel out and at the end of the day you're still white and I don't think y'all understand the intersectionality of oppression, like identities, like what the fuck? And I'm not saying that your queerness, your identity is not valid, but a lot of y'all like to weaponize that shit. And it's kind of crazy because black women cannot do the same when we're misgendered. Nope. Even before I came out as non-binary, I was still misgendered as a black woman. And that's wild because it's y'all, white people, who created this whole binary. I feel really bad for individuals that have been so duped by this lived out shit that they really do view the world like this. Like you can say a lot of things about this Humpty Dumpty person, but you can't say they're lying. This is really how they feel. They really view people in this hierarchy of oppression this is literally the oppression olympics like cue the freaking 2015 shoe on head video like this is the oppression olympics and it's just so sad you know here's how you know that that issue just just isn't real so i come from y'all know i don't come from the best background i had like a hard life growing up um and many people don't know but i have a brother many people don't know that but My brother and I, because we grew up in the same home, had the same opportunities to be successful, really. I mean, in many ways, he had more, actually. Um, You know, I'm trans. He's a straight male, you know. And if you look at my life and his life, we've taken two completely different directions. He's been in and out of prison for my entire life, you know, uh, drugs, you know, just bad, bad, bad choices. And there's not enough to be said about that's what life is. Life is choices. I had every reason to be the person who was in and out of jail and on drugs. I'm like, I had every reason to be like a tranny prostitute on the side of the road. Like every reason, right? And yet that's not what I did because I didn't want to make those choices. And for me, it's like any ideology that tells you that your hardships are based on your skin color, you're non-binary, you invented that, or, you know, your gender identity or your transness, which is real. It's like, that ideology is your enemy. That ideology is keeping you in shackles. And that's what they want to do. You can make your life whatever you want it to be at any time, always. You can invent the life you want. You can pull something out of nothing. You can move up in life. And it's like, I just feel bad for people. I genuinely actually, it makes me kind of emotional. that This person is clearly miserable. This person clearly sees white people and like, to the, they see white people as such the enemy that they even view like white non-binary people as the enemy because they're white even though they're non-binary. It's like the mental gymnastics is real. And I just feel bad for them, you know? Hey, if you guys enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel and watch the full episode, which will be somewhere on the screen.